1. Giving rice, but not firewood, lending clothes, but not shoes. Providing rice stems from the belief that one must be fed to uphold morality. Offering rice to the poor is also seen as accruing virtue for oneself, which is why most people won't hesitate to do so. However, firewood is available everywhere, and with some hard work, no one should lack for it. Ancient wisdom teaches us to assist in emergencies, not to perpetuate poverty. We should help those in immediate crises, not those who are persistently impoverished due to their reliance on aid, laziness, and lack of initiative. They depend on us without any desire to improve or advance their lives. Not lending or borrowing shoes is due to the fact that everyone's foot size is different, making it hard to find a perfectly fitting pair. Likewise, life's journey is unique to each individual. My path to success may not work for you. Each person's worldview and capabilities vary, so it's important to use one's own talents and determination to carve out the most suitable path for oneself. 2. Training Fighting Roosters Zhuangzi once shared a story about training fighting roosters. Master Ji Chong was tasked with raising fighting cocks for the great king, a man with a keen interest in cockfighting, hoping that Master Ji could develop an exceptional bird ready for battle in no time. Ten days had passed when the king inquired, Is my rooster ready for combat? Master Ji replied, Not yet. It's still full of aggression and pride, spreading its wings and glaring like lightning. To the untrained eye, it may seem battle-ready, but those who truly understand cockfighting know it's far from ready. Another ten days passed, and upon the king's inquiry, Master G reported, it's still not ready. Although its aggressive energy has started to wane, it reacts at the slightest provocation from other birds, eager to fight. So, it's still not the time. After ten more days, the king asked again, and Master G responded, Still not ready. It no longer reacts violently to external stimuli, but resentment still lingers in its eyes. We must wait longer. Another ten days went by, and upon the king's query, Master G declared, Now it is nearly ready. It pays no mind to provocations from other roosters. How is it now? It's as the common saying goes, as foolish as a log. Master G explained, This rooster has been trained to resemble a wooden chicken, its spirit turned inward, achieving the highest state of being. It looks inward, so when placed among others, any rooster that dares to challenge it will be filled with fear and flee. Now it is truly ready to compete. We often assume that a rooster fit for combat must be like a valiant warrior, filled with fierce energy, strong will, and an unwavering determination to win at all costs. However, Zhuangzi presents a higher realm of existence, one where external arrogance is systematically eliminated and all vitality is concentrated within. This doesn't imply a lack of fighting spirit, but rather that such spirit should be directed inward. Individuals should focus on themselves. Only by achieving a state of complete virtue can a fighter reach the pinnacle of existence, securing victory not through force or technique, but through their character. 3. The Money Hungry Man During the era of the Han and Chu rivalries, there was a man consumed by his greed for money. Despite coming from a poor background, the thought of possessing wealth constantly filled his mind. One day, he spotted a store selling small gold statues, a place frequented by the town's affluent residents. Unable to control his desires, he decided to steal one of the statues. He dressed neatly and pretended to browse the shops in town, observing carefully. Spotting a gold statue displayed prominently, he swiftly took it and ran. However, the guards noticed and quickly apprehended him. 
When asked why he dared to steal in broad daylight with many people around, the man simply replied that he did not pay attention to his surroundings. This story illustrates a lesson that greed can blind individuals, making them lose their common sense. The man in the story was so fixated on the gold statue that he was not alert to the dangers of his actions. Similarly, in life, there are those who are solely focused on money and fame, causing everything else to fade in comparison, including the happiness that lies within their grasp. 4. Falling Ill Due to a Snake During the Jin Dynasty, there was a man named Le Guang. One day, he invited a friend over to his house. Upon the friend's arrival, Guang noticed that his complexion was unwell. When asked, the friend revealed that he had been feeling sick since the last time he attended a party at Guang's house. On that day, he had drunk from a cup which, unbeknownst to him, contained the reflection of a small snake. Because of this, he had become severely ill and was bedridden. Le Guang was puzzled as there was no way he would have placed a snake in his friend's drink. He looked around the room and found a bow hanging on the wall with a snake design on it, which led to his realization of what had happened. He then poured wine into a cup and asked his friend to stand in the same spot as during the party, telling him to look into the cup to see if there was a snake. The friend, seeing the snake's reflection from the bow, insisted that there was indeed a snake in it. Le Guang smiled, took down the bow from the wall, and suddenly the snake disappeared. The friend was astonished by the disappearance of the snake, then realized that there had never been a snake in the cup to begin with. It was all a reflection and his imagination. After the fear was dispelled, he quickly recovered. This story serves as a reminder not to be overly suspicious of unnecessary things. We should think rationally and carefully consider our assumptions before jumping to conclusions. Otherwise, we may find ourselves troubled by things that don't even exist. 5. The Kind-Hearted Teacher There was once a student from a very poor family, so much so that they didn't even have a place to bathe. During the summer, the boy would have to go to the river whenever he wanted to take a bath, and in the winter, the river water was bitterly cold, making bathing a long and arduous process. One day, the school assigned a new homeroom teacher to his class. This teacher, despite being busy, would often ask the boy and another female student to come to his house to help make charcoal. After they finished, the teacher would let them take a hot bath as a thank you for their help before they went home. The boy always felt happy and grateful for these opportunities, and naturally, the teacher frequently asked for his assistance. Years later, at a party celebrating some career achievements, the once poor student proudly shared these past experiences with everyone, basking in their admiration. At the end of the party, the daughter of his former teacher, who was also in attendance, sent him a message saying, Actually, my father didn't ask you to do those chores for the sake of work, but so that you would have a place to bathe. Reading this message, the man was moved to tears. He realized that for many years the teacher had treated him with such kindness without him ever knowing. The teacher not only helped him navigate the difficulties of life, but also took great care to preserve his dignity, providing support in every possible way. 6. The Kind-Hearted Judge of the Singing Competition In a particular singing contest, a contestant appeared quite nervous while introducing himself as an event singer. One of the judges, confused, asked, What's an event singer? Another judge calmly explained, It's when a large venue hosts an event, and right at the moment they kick things off and cut the ribbon, the singer is there, ready to perform their piece. Hearing this, the first judge quickly responded, Oh, so not much different from us then. This clever remark from the judge not only addressed the contestants' embarrassment and self-consciousness, but also subtly protected their dignity, making the atmosphere of the competition warm and inviting. 
This goes to show that genuine kindness can make everyone around feel that, despite simplicity, there's a wealth of humanity. There's an old saying, evil, when feared to be known, becomes greater. Good, when sought to be known, is not truly good. Good intentions require not just a kind heart, but also empathy. To illustrate, consider the scenario where businessmen sponsor poor mountainous children. A donation ceremony would then be organized at the school's sports field, witnessed by all teachers and students. These businessmen often pile up cash to donate, creating a small mountain, then invite the press and photographers to capture the children with the money. Such public welfare activities continue year after year. At these ceremonies, businessmen typically wear neatly tailored suits, smile perfectly for the cameras, while the children, not used to such grand events, can only look down, clutching the corners of their clothes, trembling and anxious. Yet, it doesn't stop there. After the photos, the children are expected to face the camera and describe their family's dire situations. This practice has caused many children to lose their optimism and confidence. Although they receive financial aid, it comes at the cost of their self-esteem and pride. What these businessmen do is not kindness but ambition under the guise of generosity, nor is it goodwill but rather malicious intent hidden beneath a veneer of benevolence. 7. The Wit of the Young Monk during the Tang Dynasty on Mount Wutai, there was a renowned Zen master named Ma Zhu, who was fond of using challenging methods to teach his disciples. One day, he employed this technique to help a young disciple realize a truth. Ma Zhu placed a chair on the narrow path behind the monastery to read a book. Soon after, a young monk pushing a cart from the vegetable garden back to the monastery found his way blocked due to the path's narrowness, and Ma Zhu's legs stretched out into the path. The young monk respectfully asked his master to retract his legs, but surprisingly, Ma Zhu did not comply and instead stated, My legs are always stretched out and never retract. The young monk, both stunned and at a loss, replied, If master does not retract his legs, I cannot return to the monastery. Ma Zhu, without even glancing at the young monk, said, That is your problem. After a moment of thought, the young monk proposed, Master, since you only stretch out and do not retract, I cannot pass. Let's switch places. I will sit on the chair and you push the cart. Intrigued by this suggestion, Ma Zhu agreed to swap positions. Mimicking his master, the young monk stretched out his legs, but as Ma Zhu pushed the cart towards him, the young monk quickly retracted his legs. When asked why, the young monk replied with a smile, Master stretches and does not retract, but I can do both. Hence, I retracted my legs. Afterwards, the young monk went on his way, leaving Ma Zhu chuckling at his disciples' cleverness. Years later, Ma Zhu passed on his robe and bowl to this young monk, who went on to become a great Zen master at Mount Wu Tai, known as Zen Master Yin Feng. 8. The Eagle Who Plucked Its Own Feathers There were two eagles. One soared swiftly through the skies, while the other lumbered along at a slower pace. Consumed by jealousy, the slower eagle sought ways to undermine its rival. Ironically, its schemes did nothing to the swift eagle, which didn't lose a single feather, while it itself suffered greatly. Driven by envy, the slower eagle one day told a hunter, Ahead lies a fast-flying eagle. Use your arrow to bring it down. The hunter replied, I could, but my arrow lacks a feather. Could you spare one of yours? Agreeably, the eagle plucked a feather and handed it over, thinking, if it brings him down, losing one feather is nothing. But when the hunter shot, the swift eagle was too high and remained unscathed. The hunter then suggested, How about another feather? Without hesitation, the eagle plucked another and handed it over. Yet, the hunter missed again. 
This continued until the slow eagle had no feathers left, rendered unable to fly, and the hunter smiling said, Here's an eagle that cannot fly. Why waste my effort on one in the sky? And easily captured the now featherless bird. This story imparts two lessons. Harm intended for others often falls upon oneself, and the pit you dig for another may well become your own grave. It evokes the saying, he who digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit he has made. The slow eagle's envy led it to self-sabotage, blinded by jealousy at seeing another excel. Envy is the root of self-inflicted misfortune. Why would anyone feel upset or unhappy seeing their sibling excel unless motivated by a malevolent spirit? Anger signifies doing exactly what malevolence desires. The higher you soar, the safer you are. The swift eagle remained untouched because it flew high, beyond reach. Ascending higher is the ultimate safeguard against adversity and malice. Thus, to overcome obstacles and keep detractors at bay, strive to reach higher grounds. 9. Your spouse should not be ogled, your partner should not be touched. Don't ogle your friend's spouse. Don't touch your friend's partner. This proverb, handed down by our ancestors, reminds future generations that whether you're married or not, it's inappropriate to eye or become overly familiar with someone else's partner. It's crucial to observe proper conduct and maintain boundaries, as violating these principles is considered a severe breach of ethics. In Chapter 80 of Journey to the West, when Sun Wukong and his disciples need to pass through the Flame Mountain, they must borrow the palm leaf fan of Princess Iron Fan, wife of the Bull Demon King. Confident due to his sworn brotherhood with the Bull Demon King, Sun Wukong approaches his sister-in-law to borrow the fan. Unexpectedly, the Bull Demon King, misunderstanding the situation, scolds Sun Wukong, saying, Previously you tricked my wife into lending you the fan. She refused, so she came to me, yet now you still pursue her. As the saying goes, do not oppress your friend's wife. This statement from the Bull Demon King has since spread widely. Your friend's wife should not be oppressed, ogled. A friend's wife must not be coveted is aimed at men, emphasizing that beyond not bullying or deceiving your friend's wife, the term oppress also means to covet or take what is not yours. This principle has been passed down through generations, as forming too close a bond with a friend's wife can lead not only to gossip among acquaintances, but can also harm the friendship and even the marital relationship. A story from the Song Dynasty about Liu Qi and Zhang Zhen, close friends, illustrates this. After Liu Qi married Huang Mei, Zhang Zhen often visited and stayed for meals. Over time, he developed feelings for Huang Mei, recognized for her virtue. Liu Qi noticed but found it difficult to express. Once during a meal at a tavern, a waiter spilled soup on Zhang Zhen's clothes. Liu Qi used this moment to subtly hint at forgiveness for the unintentional act. Ashamed, Zhang Zhen realized his mistake and ceased his admiration for Huang Mei. As society evolves and moral standards decline, the saying, a friend's wife should not be oppressed, has morphed into, a friend's wife need not be formal, leading to instances where friends betray each other over a spouse. The original proverb serves as a warning to control desires, adhere to moral standards, and avoid infringing upon others' relationships. Your friend's husband cannot be touched. The lesser-known second part of the proverb, your friend's husband cannot be touched, targets women, implying they should maintain a distance from their friend's husband. Ancient wisdom advised against direct contact between men and women suggesting exchanges should happen through a third party. Confucian etiquette discouraged intimate interactions between the sexes, 
emphasizing that women, in particular, should avoid ambiguous relationships with men other than their husbands. However, in contemporary times, some women not only intentionally fall in love with their friend's husband, but also employ various means to win him over. The TV series, Love's Innocence Lost Among Friends, depicts two close friends becoming enemies over a man. Although the storyline is tragic, similar situations are increasingly common in real life, even among acquaintances. Some viewers see themselves reflected in the drama, hence the remark. At first, I didn't grasp the show's meaning, but as I continued watching, I found myself living it. The presence of a third person in a relationship is always condemnable. Married individuals should admire their own partners instead of coveting others, and singles should seek their true love without encroaching on someone else's relationship. Regardless of gender, it's vital to maintain appropriate boundaries when interacting with the opposite sex. 10 Wise Individuals Refrain From Boasting About Four Things During the Qing Dynasty, Truong Triu penned in Dreams of Shadows that Journey to the West is a Book of Enlightenment. It appears to tell the story of Tang Sanzang's encounters with demons and spirits on his pilgrimage to the West to fetch the scriptures, but in reality, it interprets the essence of human life. The book suggests that each character and their trials embody wisdom for dealing with others and life's challenges. After reading Journey to the West, we realize that those at a higher level of understanding never boast about these four things. 1. Wealth When Tang Sanzang and his disciples visited a monastery, they were warmly received by an elder monk who, impressed by Tang Sanzang's distinguished appearance and assuming he came from a prosperous country, thought he must carry valuable treasures. Tang Sanzang, modest and without treasures, would not flaunt them even if he had any. However, Sun Wukong, the monkey king, liked to show off and picked a fight with the monk's arrogance, leading to unnecessary trouble. The story illustrates that flaunting wealth only arouses envy and desire in others, and a truly rich inner life needs no external display. 2. Abilities Sun Wukong, after becoming a disciple of Bodhi, quickly mastered the clouds and 72 transformations. Encouraged by his brothers to show off his skills, he did only to be reprimanded by Bodhi. The real strength is often silent, accumulating power quietly. An exceptional person knows when to reveal their skills, humbly keeping them hidden until necessary. The tale of Qin Wu, a powerful and ambitious ruler, warns against the dangers of showcasing one's abilities recklessly, leading to his untimely death. 3. Intelligence among the disciples, Sha Wu Jing was the smartest, portraying himself as gentle and honest while being deeply insightful and tactful. He never flaunted his intelligence, choosing instead to speak up only when necessary. His approach resolves conflict smoothly, showing that true intelligence lies in knowing when to reveal one's wisdom and when to keep it hidden for the greater good. 4. Accomplishments When Sun Wukong caused havoc in heaven, Neja captured him with help from higher powers but humbly credited the victory to others. This story teaches that sharing credit and leading by example in times of trouble build a solid foundation for success. True quality involves making sacrifices without seeking praise, embodying humility rather than arrogance. These stories from Journey to the West demonstrate that true wisdom, strength, intelligence, and virtue lie not in outward displays, but in modesty, self-control, and the willingness to share achievements and recognize the contributions of others. Success and respect come not from boasting, but from the quality of one's character and actions. 11. The philosopher leads the cow into the pen. 
A philosopher once tried to herd a bull into its pen, but no matter how hard he pulled forward or whipped behind, the bull stubbornly refused to obey and enter the pen. A passing farmer saw this, smiled and simply plucked a handful of grass from the ground, placing it before the bull's nose. To everyone's surprise, the bull willingly followed the farmer into the pen. After reflecting on the incident, the philosopher derived several lessons. Everyone has their own strengths, such as a philosopher not necessarily being as skilled as a farmer in dealing with livestock. To get others to do something, coercion is not the answer. No matter how hard you try, it might not succeed. In reality, all we need to do is offer a bit of sweetness and hope in life. Things don't always go as we wish. By putting ourselves in someone else's shoes and thinking from their perspective, everything tends to go more smoothly. 12. The Eagle Sculpture That Soared A sculptor once crafted an eagle out of stone, a creation so lifelike it seemed as though it was truly soaring through the skies. Upon seeing this, a philosopher approached the sculptor and asked, how were you able to make this stone appear as if it's taking flight? The sculptor replied, Actually, I simply removed everything that was superfluous. From a mere stone, by stripping away the excess, a vivid eagle ready to fly was born. This served as a powerful reminder to the philosopher of a profound truth. Even if humans are as dull as rocks, they too can soar, provided they shed their unnecessary burdens. In essence, life's temptations are like the superfluous parts of the stone. Facing temptations, if one desires everything and is unwilling to let go, ultimately nothing will be relinquished. Life then becomes a heavy stone, and we will never become eagles, spreading our wings to fly high. Therefore, if one wishes to ascend, it is essential to let go of one's excesses. 13. The Shepherd and the Invisible Thread There was a shepherd moving forward, his step steady from left to right. Trailing behind him was a sheep, following diligently even though it was not tied with a rope. It mimicked the shepherd's movements from left to right, never straying. A philosopher, finding this odd, asked the shepherd, You don't use a rope to lead the sheep, so how does it stay so close to you without wandering off? The shepherd replied, What binds the flock to me isn't a rope, but the care and love I have for them. The shepherd's response gave the philosopher pause to reflect. To maintain a bond between individuals, it's not about the physical ropes that restrain or limit them, but rather the care and affection that nurtures the relationship. 14. The Farmer's Gourd once upon a time, there was a farmer who grew an exceptionally large gourd. However, instead of being overjoyed, the farmer found himself in a quandary, unsure of what to do with it. Using it to store wine seemed risky as it might break. Cutting it in half to make a scoop for water was impractical, as there was no container large enough to necessitate such a scoop. After witnessing this, a philosopher made an observation. People knew the gourd could be used to hold water, but they overlooked its potential as a boat on the water's surface. Isn't that a great use? Many people often confine their thinking within the gourd, limiting their ability to find solutions. In reality, if we break away from old habits and thought patterns, we can navigate through mental bottlenecks and discover a broader, more expansive world. 15. Embracing effort transforms difficulty into ease, avoiding effort. Turns ease into difficulty. This insight comes from the famous book, The Single Stroke of a Scholar, abbreviated as Scholar's Effort, by Pan Zhen Yu of the Qing Dynasty. The original phrase, is there anything in the world that differentiates difficult from easy? By undertaking it, what's difficult also becomes easy. By avoiding it, what's easy also becomes difficult, captures the essence that the world's tasks do not inherently divide into hard and easy.
It is our willingness to engage that transforms them. Pan Zhen Yu illustrates this principle with a story about two monks from a remote area in Shu, one poor and one wealthy. The poor monk expressed a desire to travel to the southern sea, to which the wealthy monk skeptically asked, What means do you have to accomplish this journey? The poor monk replied, All I need is a bottle and a bowl. The wealthy monk retorted, I have wanted to charter a boat downstream for many years without success. How do you suppose you'll manage? Yet, a year later, the poor monk returned from the southern sea, sharing his adventures with the wealthy monk, who was left in shame. Despite the unknown distance of thousands of miles between western Shu and the southern sea, the poor monk achieved his goal, while the wealthy monk did not. This story emphasizes that determination in pursuing a path, no matter how modest the beginnings, can outshine the capabilities of those with more resources but less resolve. 16. Strength in Solitude According to Zhuangzi, alone in coming, alone in going, represents the pinnacle of human existence. Individuals who reach this state are akin to unparalleled masters who, after periods of seclusion and intense cultivation, emerge invincible. Being alone gathers all of one's energy to overcome flaws, marking the beginning of true strength. Zhuangzi's writings in The Northern Migration suggest that although the vastness of heaven and earth and the orderly progression of the seasons do not boast of their existence, they embody the ultimate Tao. The universe quietly operates without fanfare, only disturbed by those restless in spirit who constantly seek noise and commotion. In life, solitude is inevitable. Born alone, die alone, with unions and separations fleeting, no one can accompany another forever. While conversing with others may alleviate loneliness, it cannot cure it. The more one speaks, the emptier one may feel, as solitude quickly returns when silence ensues. Sometimes it's better to digest certain matters alone rather than share them, as sharing might reduce them to mere jest. Do not squander the solitude meant for personal growth. Only in silence, without fear, and in solitude can one truly understand how to change the course of events. Some say that only by traversing the desolate Gobi Desert can one find a refreshing stream. Life is a long journey walked alone. Frivolous talk is less valuable than maintaining inner peace. Solitude allows for self-discovery. Some say crowded gatherings are actually assemblies of the lonely, yet the solitary individual is truly free. In solitude, one encounters the most authentic self and liberates the inner being. People who enjoy socializing are still searching, yet few find a kindred spirit. Those who seem indifferent in their solitude are, in reality, deeply understanding and befriending themselves. Solitude also grants us the time to focus on ourselves and do what we wish, bringing comfort and freedom. Superficial interactions often lead to exhaustion. Bending to others only diminishes oneself. Life is precious, so don't let idle chatter waste your valuable time. True solitude means avoiding external interference and maintaining a free spirit. Solitude is about strengthening oneself. A saying goes, either be lonely or be mediocre. Those who are self-reliant must weather storms alone. Don't fear adversity. Anything that doesn't defeat you ultimately strengthens you. Every successful person has fought their way up alone, enduring tough times. Behind every moment of glory are hidden pains and tears. Learn to endure solitude and turn it into a habit like an eagle, or follow the crowd like sheep seeking safety in numbers. After a period of solitary cultivation, one's soul becomes steadfast and wisdom enlightened. Your approach to tasks then mirrors military strategy. Swift as the wind, slow as the forest, Aggressive as fire, 
immovable as the mountain, unpredictable as the night, and thunderous as the storm. Those who walk their path alone are formidable, rarely facing defeat later in life. Solitude is the best way to reinforce oneself. Throughout history, the wise have preferred solitude, and the truly strong have tended towards independence. Solitude gives us time to reflect, distancing ourselves from society's hustle and returning to tranquility. It makes us resilient, not reliant on others' strength or swayed by their opinions. Therefore, cherish your solitude, live authentically, and achieve your personal best in the limited time we all have. 17. Cultivating Understanding Through Mindfulness In the past, there were two mountains, one facing north and the other south, each topped with a temple, commonly referred to as the North Temple and the South Temple. Every morning, young monks from both temples would descend to the market below to buy vegetables. Despite their youthful vigor, their minds, unrefined by the trials of life, harbored competitiveness and envy towards each other. Whenever they encountered each other at the market, they would often engage in secret challenges or openly compete. One day, the young monk from the South Temple asked, Where are you headed? The monk from the North Temple replied, Wherever my feet take me, I shall go. Unable to come up with a comeback, the young monk from the South Temple felt frustrated and hurried back to report to his master. The young and naive monk, as well as the abbot of the South Temple, who was equally foolish and unable to let go of jealousy, was advised to use the same question next time and respond with, and if you had no feet, where would you go? Hoping to gain the upper hand. The following morning, when the monks met again, the South Temple's monk asked the same question. This time, the North Temple's monk answered, wherever the wind takes me. Again, the South Temple's monk was left speechless and frustrated. Upon returning and explaining the situation to his master, the abbot laughed and suggested asking, And if there were no wind, where would you go? Eager to silence his counterpart with this new comeback, the South Temple's monk approached the North Temple's monk the next day with the question. However, he received a straightforward reply this time. I'm going to the market. This left the South Temple's monk with no response as asking, and if there were no market, where would you go, would be absurd. The abbot, upon hearing this, sighed deeply and shared a realization. To see the impermanence in a sunset, to understand freedom in the drifting clouds, to witness the wonder in the mountains, to grasp the vastness in the ocean, the value of learning lies in the realization through one's own heart, not through others. What belongs to others will forever remain theirs. Only what you realize on your own is truly yours. 18. Roots and Branches Once upon a time, there was a young man who always liked to brag about himself to others. One day, his mentor took him to a tree and asked, do you think the top of this tree is beautiful? Of course, it's absolutely stunning with all its blooming flowers, the disciple quickly replied. Just then, a gust of wind passed through, making a rustling sound in the tree. The mentor asked again, Did you hear that? Certainly. The sound from the top of the tree is so clear and pleasant, the young man eagerly answered. But do you know what the top of the tree is called in Chinese? It's called mat. After saying this, the mentor pointed to the base of the tree and said, Do you see the roots? Do you hear any sound from the tree's roots? The young man frowned and replied, Well, the roots are buried in the ground. How can I see them? Moreover, the roots are silent. How can I hear any sound from them, master? But do you know what the roots are called in Chinese? They are called ben the mentor explained. This means that although the blooming top of the tree can sway and draw attention from those around, it's very fragile. Just one strong wind can break it immediately, leaving it worthless afterwards. Meanwhile, the base of the tree, 
although silent and even buried underground, is the foundation of life. Without it, there would be no tree, no leaves, no branches, and of course, the blooming flowers on top wouldn't have the chance to sway and show off in the wind. Do you understand what I'm saying? The young man bowed his head and nodded silently, absorbing the deep meaning of his mentor's words. From then on, he became more reserved, spoke more thoughtfully and especially, never bragged in front of others again. 19. The Three Marvelous Doors In this life, we often face countless disappointing events, confront differences and flaws in others, or even in ourselves, sometimes leading to frustration and extreme discomfort. How can we maintain a peaceful and tolerant attitude towards everything? The following three doors taught by Buddha offer an answer. Once a prince asked his teacher, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha, what will the path of my life be like in the future? Buddha replied, on your life's path, you will encounter three doors. Each door will have a message written on it. When you see them, you will understand. After you pass through the third door, I will be waiting for you on the other side. So, the prince embarked on his journey. Before long, he came across the first door, which read, Change the world. The prince thought, I must change the world according to my ideals, making everything that displeases me change. And so, he did just that. Years later, the prince encountered the second door, with the inscription, change others. He thought, I need to use my noble thoughts to reform everyone, making their characters more righteous, and he acted accordingly. After more years passed, he reached the third door which stated, change yourself. The prince realized, I need to improve my own character to perfection, and that's exactly what he did. Later, when the prince met Buddha again, he said, I have passed through the three doors on my life's path and have seen the lessons on each door. I now understand that changing the world is less effective than changing the people in it. Changing others is less effective than changing oneself. Buddha smiled upon hearing this and said, Perhaps now you should return. Go back and look at those doors again more carefully. Following Buddha's advice, the prince went back and from a distance, saw the third door. However, it was different from before. It now read, accept yourself. Only then did the prince understand why, while changing himself, he always felt self-critical and distressed. It was because he refused to acknowledge and embrace his own flaws, always focusing on what he could not do, thus overlooking his own strengths. Then, he began to learn to love and accept himself. Continuing his return journey, the prince saw the second door now read, Accept Others. He then understood why he was always filled with frustration and discomfort. He did not accept the differences between himself and others, unwilling to empathize with and understand others' shortcomings. From then on, he began to practice tolerance towards others. Approaching the first door again, it read, Accept the world. The prince realized his attempts to change the world had always failed because he had not accepted that many things in the world could not go as he wished. He always tried to force others, controlling them while neglecting to improve himself. Thus, he started to embrace the world with a broad heart. At this point, Buddha was waiting for him and said, I think now you understand what harmony and peace really mean. The story of the three doors teaches us that living in this world, we should recognize our own strengths and weaknesses, constantly strive to improve ourselves to become noble and tolerant individuals. We need to approach others with an open mind, putting ourselves in their shoes, fostering good relationships everywhere, avoiding harboring resentments. Only by doing so can we live in harmony with others and truly contribute to society. 20. Zhang Tai Gong, Three Key Life Lessons There's a saying, 
Not knowing about Jiang Taigong is a waste, even if you've read all the history books. Indeed, Jiang Taigong is a real historical figure. Though not endowed with the supernatural powers attributed to him in myths, he truly embodies the notion that talent can flourish late in life. If we talk about someone who achieved great success later in life, Jiang Taigong is second to none. In his early years, he faced many hardships, living unnoticed by the river until he was over 70. Yet, as the saying goes, Jiang Taigong fishes and those willing will bite. He met King Wen of Zhou at over 80 years old. His desire to contribute finally found its place. From then on, he assisted King Wen and King Wu of Zhou, achieving monumental career accomplishments that have made his name immortal. Jiang Taigong's life experience teaches us that success is not about timing, but about three key principles, enduring solitude. The poet Li Bai once said, Since ancient times, the sage is often alone. This perfectly describes Jiang Taigong. After the fall of the Shang dynasty, he retreated to live by the river, spending at least two years and four months in solitude. To the world, he was just an old, insignificant man, seemingly unwise for fishing with a straight hook. Yet, unknown to all, this old man was patient, demonstrating his virtue through fishing. He spent his years in solitude, charging up for when he would emerge to make a difference. It's often found that successful people can better endure solitude, setting grand goals, clear thinking, and enriching their knowledge. When the opportunity arises, they are ready to seize it without hesitation, being foolish and fervent. Without foolishness and fervency, no one will know your name. Without fervency and foolishness, you won't achieve anything. This quote from Jiang Taigong means that a bit of foolishness and madness is necessary. Foolishness here means steadfastly holding on to your beliefs, striving for what you love, and setting goals with diligence. As for fervency, it's about maintaining faith in your dreams and pursuing your talents with confidence. Every individual pursuing a dream has their foolish and fervent points, which, though may seem insane to others, are driven by a strong personal belief. Speaking carefully. Sometimes, it's best to keep your mouth shut and choose your words carefully. This famous quote from Jiang Taigong advises on the importance of cautious speech. Throughout history, successful individuals have paid close attention to the art of speaking. Even Confucius emphasized being cautious with words and actions. Reckless speech can hurt others and bring trouble upon oneself. Thus, the cultivated person does not speak carelessly but thinks before speaking, refraining from thoughtless chatter. Intelligent people use their minds before their mouths, considering carefully what to say, when, and how. Every word has the potential to either build or destroy you. These lessons from Jiang Taigong offer timeless wisdom on achieving success through solitude, fervency, and thoughtful communication. 21. The head of a man, the legs of a woman. Visible to the eye, yet untouchable. In American culture, folk sayings often carry the wisdom of generations past, offering life lessons distilled from everyday experiences. While they might not possess the elegance of poetry or prose, these sayings have been cherished and passed down through millennia, revered for their encapsulation of cultural wisdom and values. One such proverb, the head belongs to the man, the feet to the woman, seen but not touched, delves deep into cultural norms and practices that once prevailed. Historically, men commonly wore their hair long while women would bind their feet, a practice that significantly restricted their mobility. This led to a societal norm where touching another's head, especially a man's, was seen as a breach of respect, reserved only for intimate relations or elders, symbolizing a deep disrespect if done without consent. Similarly, 
women's feet were considered private, and it was deemed inappropriate for them to be exposed or touched by others. The saying also reflects ancient beliefs about personal dignity tied to one's attire and appearance. Men's headwear, for example, was not just a part of their outfit, but a marker of their status and identity, making it off-limits for others to touch. This respect for personal space extended to women's feet, viewed as intimate parts of the body that should not be casually exposed or touched. Moreover, this proverb hints at the concept of preserving one's spiritual energy or luck, believed to be concentrated in the head for men and in the feet for women. Interfering with these areas was thought to disturb one's fortune, emphasizing the importance of physical boundaries. In contemporary times, though these practices have evolved and societal norms have become less rigid, the underlying respect for personal boundaries remains. Modern interactions might allow for more casual physical contact among friends, regardless of gender. But the principle of consent and respect for personal space persists, especially in public settings where touching someone's head or feet without permission can still be seen as a violation of social etiquette or personal dignity. This evolution reflects a broader shift towards recognizing individual autonomy and respect for personal boundaries, a testament to the dynamic nature of culture and societal norms. 22. The sharp-leaved grass. Six months of preparation for maturity. There's no shortcut to success without going through hard work. To achieve any significant accomplishment, one must put in a great deal of effort, face countless failures, and through these experiences, gain valuable knowledge that paves the way for the future. At a concert, a musician captivated the audience with his exceptional performance skills. After the concert ended, a music critic approached him to congratulate and praise him as a rare genius of the century. The musician responded, Everyone wants to call me a genius when they see my successful performances, but what they don't realize is how much hard work it took to earn this reputation. The Principle of the Sharp-Leaved Grass In the African savannas, a type of grass known as sharp-leaved grass often grows. Also referred to as the king of the savanna, its growth process is quite different from that of ordinary plants. For the first six months, the sharp-leaved grass is nearly the shortest among grasses. When spring arrives, they start to grow, but the sharp-leaved grass only reaches about a hand's length, appearing very frail and pitiful. It's even difficult to observe any signs of growth. However, six months later, with the arrival of the rainy season and the help of the rainwater, the sharp-leaved grass shoots up as if by magic. It grows rapidly every day, and in just a few days, it can reach over two meters tall, forming a grass wall barrier. Why can the sharp-leaved grass grow so quickly? This is because, during the previous six months, while other plants were hurriedly growing, the sharp-leaved grass was deepening its roots into the ground. Research shows its roots can extend up to 28 meters below the surface. Thanks to these deeply anchored roots, the sharp-leaved grass can absorb more nutrients and water from the soil. This makes it seem as if the grass is growing leisurely, but in reality, it is quietly paving the way for its future, calmly accumulating strength and waiting for the right moment, which is a heavy rainstorm. The sharp-leaved grass focuses on internal growth. While other plants are swaying and catching the eye, the sharp-leaved grass is not affected, nor does it wish to compete with others. It focuses on accumulating for itself and developing stably. When the heavy rain finally comes, the sharp-leaved grass unleashes the strength it has long accumulated. It stands tall against the wind and rain, growing contrary to the trend and creating a miraculous sight overnight. For most people, they only see the sharp-leaved grass grow rapidly in a short time, unaware of how its roots have clung deep in the soil, enabling it to grow quickly 
while also resisting the damage from storms. Indeed, the story of the talented musician and the sharp-leaved grass both remind us that the success and miracles we admire all come from our own efforts. We don't need to worry why our efforts aren't immediately rewarded, because every bit of effort is accumulating for our future. The biggest difference between success and failure lies not in IQ or ability, but in resilience and persistence. The great poet Tagore once said, Light is right before our eyes. If you can endure the pain and walk through the darkness, your burden will become a gift and your suffering will light your way. May those who are pursuing their dreams, no matter the pain they encounter in life, know how to turn it into a beacon of light for their future, illuminating the path ahead for themselves. 23. Idle Hands Make for an unfulfilled life. There was a young woman who, after graduating from college, landed a job at a prestigious company, proud of her high academic achievements. She thought she had settled into a comfortable life. After completing her daily tasks, she would return home to relax and watch TV shows, thinking this was enough. Meanwhile, a colleague of hers continued to study and research after work hours. The woman scoffed at her colleague's efforts, believing that her own superior education meant she didn't need to try as hard and that her colleague's efforts were in vain. Despite both of them having similar job responsibilities and schedules, it was only at the end of the day that their differing attitudes towards personal development became apparent. After five years, as the company faced restructuring and layoffs, the woman, despite her education, found herself on the redundancy list. It was then she realized that to compete with a younger, more dynamic generation, mere intellectual abilities and physical strength were not enough. The key was the experience and knowledge accumulated over the years. Eight years after her graduation, she had not advanced beyond her initial post-college level, while the younger generation was rapidly advancing and bringing fresh talents to the fore. This made her face numerous challenges and obstacles in competing with them. Life, much like rowing against the current, demands progress to avoid regression. In a world filled with talented and exceptional individuals, one must continuously strive to enhance their own value. The comfort of staying in bed does not compare to the warmth of a promising future. The stories in books offer life lessons worth learning. Laziness and complacency only lead to a dull and unchallenged existence. People often complain that a midlife crisis caught them off guard. But in reality, there were countless opportunities to prevent it. It might be that choosing the path of least resistance gave the crisis a chance to strike. 24. Idle Time – The Greatest Fear in Life The pursuit of reaching one's highest potential is a fundamental aspect of living, and it is imperative that one should never fall into idleness. The renowned Chinese author Shen Tongwen once stated, my greatest fear in life is to find myself idle and lose the meaning of life. His student, Wang Tangji, depicted Shen in an article as someone who, even in the cold of winter without any heating, would wrap himself in a quilt and continue writing. In his later years, Shen refused to take time off. Instead, he compiled the Study on Ancient Chinese Costumes, drawing from a vast array of documents and research. He wrote incessantly, while others indulged in leisure and continued to write even when faced with questions and criticisms. Let busyness be the normal state of life, for it is the only way to truly comprehend its value. 25. Idle hands breed melancholy while laziness fosters illness. Idle hands breed sorrow, and laziness breeds illness. Keeping oneself busy is not as bad as often perceived. In fact, it's a gift from above. Climbing ten steps without catching your breath is challenging even for the youth, yet 91-year-old Mr. Lai Thieu Lo has achieved this. 
his secret to maintaining robust health, never allowing himself to idle. Every morning he wakes at 7 a.m., exercises for an hour, enjoys breakfast at 8 a.m., takes a walk, and returns to read the newspaper at 9.30 a.m. He listens to music in the afternoon, practices calligraphy, exercises for another hour, and then spends time helping his wife with household chores. There's a saying, idle people are filled with sorrow, the lazy are plagued with illnesses, but the busy ones are truly happy. Indeed, when a person is idle, both their mind and body suffer as if tortured. In idleness, one can easily slip into negative thinking and self-blame. Physical laziness can degrade our health and lead to self-reproach. On the contrary, staying busy is a precious remedy in this world, as busyness has always been the beginning of a vibrant life. Japanese novelist Kazuo Ishiguro once said, Looking back at my life in old age, seeing that I've spent my days capturing the unique beauty of the world, I believe I will be satisfied with it, and no one can make me think that time was wasted. There's also a touching story about a group of elderly individuals in Taiwan, with an average age of 81, who rode motorcycles around Taiwan, moving many people. They journeyed together from north to south, from dawn till dusk, circling the island in 13 days. Among them, two had cancer, four needed hearing aids, eight suffered from heart disease, and all had arthritic conditions. What they did transcends age. They could have chosen to live out their final days quietly in a hospital or bravely step out as a statement. Life is inherently filled with challenges, but no matter how tough, if given another life, many would still choose to live with the same zest and energy because it's only then you truly understand the value of life. 26. A life of excessive leisure is truly a disaster. Living a life of excessive leisure is truly a disaster. The Austrian writer Stefan Zweig once said, Every gift from fate carries a hidden value. There was a man in England who, from a poor garbage collector, suddenly became a millionaire because he was lucky enough to win a prize. He quit his job, indulged in extravagant spending to buy luxury cars, engaged in drug use, prostitution, and gambling. Within just seven years, he had spent 9.7 million pounds and ended up destitute, abandoned by both his wife and daughter. It's clear that material wealth can only satisfy temporary happiness. When people indulge in pleasures and laxity, it becomes very difficult for them to realize true happiness that comes from the heart. Leisure can bring joy for a while, but this emptiness, if repeated often, will one day become boring. Being busy can be exhausting. However, if you know how to organize and divide your time into smaller segments, it can allow you to achieve a lot, such as wealth, happiness, and inner fulfillment. Throughout the decades of our lives, we should leave something behind for this world. Never consider leisure as a divine gift. The things that entertain and delight you one day might destroy you. Of course, being too busy or too idle is not advisable. Finding leisure within busyness and busyness within leisure, having something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to is the most complete state of life. When you start to understand how to cherish time, make the most of it, and organize it sensibly, you are extending your own lifespan and enhancing the value of your life. Living life to the fullest means never giving up at any stage of life. 27. The Way of Moderation Hard objects can easily be broken while soft ones are easily bent. Only through moderation can one be invincible. The Book of Rights, the Doctrine of the Mean states, before joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure are released, they are in a state of equilibrium, and when they are expressed but controlled, they reach a state of harmony. Moderation is the fundamental nature of humans, and harmony is the principle everyone should follow. 
Achieving moderation and harmony ensures peace for heaven and earth and prosperity for all beings. In the Analects of Confucius, the doctrine of the mean, it is written, the virtue of moderation is of utmost importance and reaching it is sublime, indicating that by cultivating moderation, one can attain a higher state of being. The principle of moderation plays a significant role, advocating for balance and impartiality in interactions and behaviors. The essence of moderation and harmony teaches us that everything follows a measure, too rigid, easily broken, too soft, easily bent, suggesting a balance between firmness and flexibility. This measure is the natural law of things. Fitting seamlessly with this law allows for smooth sailing, while deviation leads to obstacles. Philosophers often say that having too much or too little ego is pitiable. An inflated ego leads to blind self-confidence, arrogance, and self-centeredness ignoring the feelings of others and eventually fostering selfish behavior. Conversely, lacking self-restraint leads to insecurity, constantly following others without knowing what is best, overly concerned with others' perceptions, and living a life dictated by others, resulting in exhaustion. Therefore, exceeding or not controlling one's limits prevents one from seeing the true nature of things, those who exceed their limits are preoccupied with themselves, ignoring the genuine essence of matters, believing their truth to be the only truth. Those lacking self-control fall into another extreme, abandoning their ability to think and analyze, blindly following others without discernment. In relationships, being too distant causes longing and sorrow while being too close leads to dissatisfaction and endless conflicts. Hence the saying, distance makes the heart grow fonder, too close breeds contempt, highlights that the right balance in relationships brings out their best. Indeed, the principle of moderation and harmony encompasses all aspects of life. When cooking, the amount of salt must be just right. Too much or too little ruins the dish. Similarly, with sleep, too little leaves one drained, while too much causes physical discomfort and fatigue. In life, being too busy can make one lose sight of life's purpose and joy, whereas too much leisure leads to a lack of fulfillment. If people can maintain balance in their interactions, regulate their inner states, and achieve joy without indulgence, sorrow without despair, keeping external factors from influencing their happiness or sorrow, they can truly appreciate the beauty of moderation and harmony. 28. In dealings with others, integrity is paramount. In dealing with others, integrity is paramount. Our connections with individuals often start with trust in their character. If a person cannot earn trust in their character, their abilities, no matter how great, may fall short in achieving significant success. Consider a large company in need of an accounting assistant. The HR specialist interviews and screens many candidates daily. After several rounds of selection, only three remain with comparable skills, leaving the HR specialist at a loss. The company's owner only asks one question. How would you help the company evade 500,000 yuan in taxes? The first two candidates suggest creating false accounts. The owner nods but remains silent, asking them to await further notice. The last candidate, a woman, initially startled, asks after a pause, Must we do this? When the owner nods, she respectfully withdraws from the interview. At this moment, the owner stands, smiles at her and says, Please wait, you are the most honest and principled of the candidates. Congratulations, you've passed the interview. Over time, this young woman is promoted to a respected chief accounting inspector. The Book of Rights mentions virtue achieves success, implying that character is the most effective measure of a person's worth, the foundation of trust, and the ultimate boundary in interpersonal conduct. An interesting parable goes as follows. 
God has a scale for weighing moral character with a standard weight for comparison. High moral weight indicates superior character, while a lighter weight suggests inferior character. One day, a poor man steps on the scale, his weight significantly exceeding the standard, earning God's praise as superior. A wealthy man, fearing he might not measure up and be deemed inferior, straps a heavy gold belt around his waist before stepping on the scale. Indeed, he weighs more than the standard, but God deems him inferior. The wealthy man protests, This scale is inaccurate. The poor man has nothing, yet I, adorned with treasures, weigh more than he does. God replies, This scale does not measure wealth but character. Apart from gold, the poor man's bones are much heavier than yours. Without the gold, your bones are almost weightless. The most valuable asset in life is not the extent of one's wealth, but the success in being a person of integrity. A good moral character is the best business card one can have, and also the best feng shui for one's life. 29. Respecting others is, essentially, respecting yourself. One day, a commotion arose at the entrance of a school. It turned out a woman was berating the security guard. She had come to visit a friend working in the school, asking the guard to open the gate for her, mentioning she had handed over a pass early that morning. However, adhering to protocol, the guard requested she sign in. The woman, finding this procedure unnecessary, scolded the guard, Aren't you just a guard? What right do you have to ask this of me? The guard, slightly angered, retorted, This is a school. To keep the children safe, we have to do this. Unexpectedly, the woman burst into tears, drawing onlookers to judge the situation. She even threatened to complain about the guard to the principal. Fortunately, her friend arrived soon after and, being a reasonable person, quickly apologized to the guard, de-escalating the situation. Onlookers felt the woman was uneducated and disrespectful, causing a scene that turned into a public spectacle. In reality, whether someone is a doorkeeper or a janitor, every job and every person deserves respect. Empathy, understanding, and tolerance towards others are not easy virtues to embody, but they are fundamental for anyone to cultivate diligently. Living among others is often like looking into a mirror. Smile at someone and they will likely smile back. If you are polite to others, they will treat you with courtesy in return and vice versa. Morality can compensate for a lack of talent, but talent can never make up for a deficit in moral character. Respecting others is, in essence, respecting oneself. 30. Gratitude for life. From a young age, parents and teachers often instill in children the importance of having a kind and benevolent heart. The most revered individuals are those who maintain their goodness through life's trials. There's a touching story about an American man named Aaron, who was desperately seeking employment to ensure his two-year-old child wouldn't go hungry. Finally, he landed a job interview, which he had eagerly prepared for. On the morning of the interview, with only $2 in his pocket, he took the bus to the company. However, en route to his interview, the bus was involved in a traffic accident. While the bus halted, no one seemed ready to assist. Aaron asked the driver to wait for him as he went to help the injured. But the driver responded, The bus won't wait. I'll leave if you get off. After a moment of internal struggle, Aaron chose to help sacrificing his valuable interview opportunity. Fortunately, the injured person was quickly taken to the hospital for timely treatment. Aaron reflected, I missed out on that job opportunity because a job can be found again, but a human life is irreplaceable. At that moment, all I could think about was saving that person. Fortunately, Aaron's act of kindness was covered by several media outlets. Subsequently, he received numerous job offers, including from a company that hired him without an interview.
Thanks to the collective support of kind-hearted people, his life significantly improved. Kindness is like a circle. If you live with gratitude and benevolence, the good deeds you've done will one day be repaid in various ways. As an author once wrote in an article, sometimes kindness doesn't reward you immediately, but it brings unexpected blessings. Occasionally, these acts of goodness return in different forms, allowing you to experience the vastness and richness of generosity. 31. No matter how much you learn, the most important lesson is learning to be a decent human being. Learn a thousand things, learn ten thousand things, but most importantly, learn to be a person. This is a saying from the renowned educator Dao Han Tri. On this journey of life, we must learn to be responsible for ourselves and to treat others with sincerity. We should learn to be forgiving, to respect others, and to think from their perspectives. Learn to be grateful for life, to maintain goodness, and to treat everyone kindly. To live a life as a human, one must base it on integrity. For integrity is the measure of a person's character. It's crucial in determining one's success or failure, and it serves as their strongest support. Having good integrity is truly our greatest asset. 32. The Repercussions of a Misguided Teacher Confucius had a student named Mo from the state of Dang. Mo was of average academic ability but always considered himself the best among his peers. After studying for a few years, Mo requested to return to his homeland, believing he had mastered his teacher's teachings. This prompted Tzu Kung to ask, would it be problematic if he becomes an official upon returning home? Confucius, patting his thigh, responded, Not at all. Tzu Kung then inquired, What if he becomes a military general? Stroking his beard, Confucius answered, That would be fine. Persisting, Tzu Kung asked, What if he turns into a bandit? Confucius, while yawning, replied, It wouldn't do any harm. It was only when Tzu Kung casually mentioned, I heard Mo intends to return home to become a teacher, that Confucius suddenly sprang up, alarmed. Without even taking the time to put on his shoes properly or button his robe, he rushed out of the gate in a panic. His students, following him, asked, Where are you going in such a hurry? Confucius, running, answered, To the state of Dang immediately. When asked why, he continued, to prevent Mo from becoming a teacher. If he becomes an official, at most he could harm a village. As a general, he might harm a city. Even as a bandit, it's not certain he could harm anyone significantly. But if he becomes a teacher, he could cause harm for generations to come. Even I wouldn't be able to avoid the consequences. 33. Assist the desperate, not the lazy. Rescue the urgent, not the impoverished. When someone is in a dire situation, lending a hand to help them overcome adversity is an act of kindness and virtue. However, aiding the lazy or the poor may only lead to increased dependence on you, turning them into a bottomless pit that ultimately depletes you as well. A business owner, after becoming successful, generously built 258 homes for the needy and elderly in his hometown. This act of goodwill, intended to assist those in hardship, unexpectedly led to demands for more. My son is getting married soon. One house isn't enough. We need several more. Though I've moved to the city, I grew up here, so I deserve another house. You demolished our old house besides giving us a new one. You owe us compensation. Their greed seemed endless, causing the businessman considerable distress, to the point where he stopped visiting his hometown for the New Year's celebration for two years. Every time I visit, people come with all sorts of problems and demands, so it's better I don't return. In the movie The Godfather, there's a line. Unlimited kindness will only lead to taking advantage of. 
Compassion without principle will only lead to unreasonable demands. When kindness lacks boundaries and principles, it can breed malice, allowing others to take your generosity for granted and, without a second thought, crush your goodwill. And when you can no longer help, they may repay you with resentment. Therefore, it's advisable to assist those genuinely in need and facing urgent difficulties, not the lazy or merely impoverished. Practicing kindness should also come with discernment of when it is and isn't appropriate to help. 34. Being virtuous equates to accumulating merit, but being foolish does not. Being virtuous is to accumulate moral worth, but naivety is not part of it. At the core of humanity, nature is fundamentally good. Virtuousness is essentially human nature, and it's thanks to this goodness that the world is filled with warmth and hope. However, virtue also requires wisdom, the sharpness of rational thought. Blind goodness is nothing but folly. There once was a Zen master meditating by a river when he heard an unusual noise. It turned out to be a scorpion struggling in the water trying to escape. The master reached out to save the scorpion, but unfortunately got stung in the process. He endured the pain and placed the scorpion back on the ground, continuing his meditation. The scorpion fell into the water again and the master rescued it once more, only to be stung again. After a third fall and rescue, a fisherman who had been watching asked the master, The scorpion has stung you repeatedly. Why do you keep saving it? The master replied, Stinging others is its nature, but compassion is mine. As the scorpion fell into the water yet again, the master prepared to save it once more when the elderly fisherman used a branch to allow the scorpion to climb out on its own. The fisherman advised, Compassion is not wrong, but first, be compassionate towards yourself. Protect yourself first, then extend your compassion to other beings. Virtue is commendable, but it also requires the sharpness of intellect. Human hearts are complex and the world is perilous. Blind, irrational goodness only empowers those with insatiable greed to take advantage, allowing the scheming to profit at others' expense, ultimately harming the well-intentioned giver. This narrative speaks to the pitfalls of blindly practiced virtue, reminding us that although the world and its inhabitants may not always be kind, we should not lose our inherent goodness. However, wise virtue does not mean calculating benefits in exchange for kindness. One should give with a generous heart, but also discern who truly deserves such kindness. 9. 35. Only through true resilience can one truly save oneself. Strength and self-reliance are key to personal salvation. Consider the story of a monkey whose abdomen was grazed by a tree branch, bleeding profusely. Upon encountering another monkey, it exposed its wound, lamenting, Look how much pain I'm in. Each monkey that saw the injury offered consolation and various remedies. However, as it continued to seek opinions, the wound became infected, leading to its death. An older monkey remarked that it had essentially sealed its own fate. Sharing one's troubles with others doesn't always solve the problem. Sometimes, enduring quietly and finding solutions on your own is more effective. Life's challenges should not always be shared with everyone you meet. Instead, Facing everything with a positive attitude and striving to change your circumstances is paramount. 36. Learn to rely on yourself. There's a bird that perches on a tree branch, never fearing that the branch might break, because its trust is not in the branch but in its own wings. Instead of worrying about the future, it's better to focus on changing the present. On the path to success, only continuous effort can provide you with a sense of security and the greatest achievements. In the journey of growth, only you can offer the most reliable support and assurance for yourself. After all, relying on mountains they may crumble, relying on people they may leave, 
Relying on yourself is the sturdiest foundation. 37. Better to play the fool. In life, two patients found themselves at the mercy of their conditions. One had exceptionally sharp hearing, catching every word the doctors said, including a grim prognosis of just three months left to live. The other was hard of hearing, struggling even to grasp conversations directed at him, let alone overhearing distant whispers. Ironically, despite the dire forecast, he didn't just surpass the three-month mark. Two years have since passed, and he remains well and alive, contrary to the fate of his keen-eared counterpart. This tale echoes a wider truth in life. Sometimes, ignorance is bliss. There's virtue in slowness over speed, in simplicity over complexity, in being considered a fool rather than a sage. It underscores the saying often mentioned, better to play the fool. After all, life's genuine joys and happiness are often cloaked in foolishness, reminding us that the essence of living might just lie in embracing the foolishness within. 38. Taking good care of yourself is a blessing for future generations. There's a story about a janitor who invested in a health care plan, which raised eyebrows among her acquaintances. When asked how she could justify spending her modest daily earnings on such a thing, her response was a wake-up call for everyone present. Ten years ago, my father saved up $80,000, but it all went towards his medical bills. A few years back, the $200,000 I had saved over more than a decade was also drained by hospital expenses when he fell ill again. It felt like we were just working to pay the hospital. I don't want my children to end up in the same situation, burdened by my health expenses. That's why, while I'm still healthy, I'm determined to take good care of myself. Health care might seem expensive, but it pales in comparison to the cost of treating illness, indeed a profound realization. 39. Optimism is life's greatest asset. Bale is known as the world's greatest optimist. One day, as a flood swept through, water rushing over the village, Bale sat on his roof, cheerfully singing. A neighbor paddled by in a boat, shouting, Bale, your ducks have all been swept away. No worries. They all know how to swim. Your wheat field is completely flooded, too. It's okay. The harvest was poor this year anyway. Oh, my. The water's up to your windows now. No problem at all. I've been meaning to wash those windows. This just makes it easier. Sometimes an open and optimistic disposition is truly life's greatest asset. When you approach situations with optimism, you'll find that difficulties and annoyances become trivial and everything suddenly seems as easy as flipping a hand. 40. To achieve a mind as calm as still water, one must grasp the concept of letting go. To achieve a mind as tranquil as water, one must understand the art of letting go. A Zen master once remarked, The key to attaining a peaceful mind lies in the ability to overlook the turmoil of fame and fortune and to discard the disturbances of desire. Thus, mastering this requires the skill of letting go. Indeed, in a life filled with constant strife, many individuals lack peace of mind and stability because they place too much emphasis on themselves. A calm mind is the breeding ground for wisdom. Tranquility akin to still water signifies a higher form of intelligence. In The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, there's a famous story about Zhu Ge Liang's empty fort strategy during his retreat at Xicheng. Facing the advance of Sima Yi with a formidable army of 150,000, Zhu Ge Liang, with only 2,500 soldiers to defend the city, did not panic. Instead, he calmly played the zither on the city walls, accompanied by two young boys. Sima Yi, upon arriving and witnessing this serene scene, was perplexed and cautiously listened to Juga Liang's music for a while before he ordered his troops to retreat swiftly. 
Zhu Ge Liang's calm demeanor effectively intimidated Sima Yi into withdrawing. This act is akin to remaining unfazed even as Mount Tai crumbles before one's eyes, or not blinking even when a deer prances by. A level of extraordinary composure that is indeed hard for the average person to achieve. 41. Accumulating virtue through speech, the foundation of prosperity. There's a saying that wounds caused by swords and knives heal more easily than the scars left by cruel words. It's essential to exercise virtue in speech, refraining from saying what should not be said and carefully choosing words when they need to be spoken. It's commonly believed that blessings enter through the mouth, just as calamities can emerge from it. The mouth can swiftly create karma, offending many in a moment. On life's journey, this can lead to an increasing number of adversaries making the path ever narrower. For a life of wealth and honor, prosperity starts with the mouth. If a family desires blessings, their speech must be virtuous. When conversing with others, empathy is key, making them feel good, naturally inclining them to agree and befriend you. Consider the story of an African-American taxi driver who transported a white mother and her child. The child asked, why is the driver's skin color different from ours? The mother smiled and replied, God wanted the world to be colorful, so he made people of different skin colors. Upon reaching their destination, the driver refused to accept payment. The driver shared, When I was a child, I asked my mother a similar question. She told me we were black because we were meant to be on the lower rungs of society. If she had answered like you did today, I might have turned out differently. Speaking kindly is creating good karma and fostering positive connections. Cultivating prosperity through virtuous speech and approaching conversations with compassion makes it easier to make friends and brings harmony to the family, naturally attracting wealth and blessings. 42. The Five Taboos of Prosperous Speech what the wise never utter. In Strategies of the Mystic Master, the Mystic Master elucidates that when interacting with others, one should avoid the following five detrimental states. The ill, those who speak weakly, lacking spirit, never fully commit to actions and show no ambition for progress. The resentful, prone to complaining, filled with negative energy, indecisive in situations and pessimistic without seeking solutions. The worried, overly sensitive and emotional, immersed in their own world, leaving others feeling disconnected. The angry, those who lose control of their emotions, display extreme joy or anger and use provocative language. The overjoyed, arrogantly satisfied, speaking down to others without care, sparking envy and turning happiness into sorrow. When a person complains, laments their poverty, or carries negative energy without contentment, their fortune dwindles away, engaging half-heartedly in tasks, adopting a negative demeanor, and living increasingly dissatisfied lives are the outcomes. A prosperous family and fulfilling life require learning contentment and practicing the art of saying, I am satisfied. Just as dark clouds bring rain, recklessness brings disaster. It is crucial to avoid acting arrogantly or recklessly, as one must bear their own fortunes and misfortunes. Controlling one's emotions is essential, avoiding reckless speech in any situation. To cultivate a life of prosperity, start with cultivating prosperous speech. 43. Speaking sincerely, considering issues from the other party's perspective. Those who lack the art of conversation may only invite trouble through their words, but if you learn to cultivate the gift of gab, then fortune will smile upon you. In the chapter Kwai Kok Tu's Heavenly Mandate, Kwai Kok Tu teaches that different strategies are required when speaking with different people. When speaking with the wise, one must draw upon a broad knowledge base. 
when speaking with the wealthy, one should be as forceful as a waterfall, yet maintain an elegant style. When speaking with those of lower status, who often are sensitive, one must be humble and polite, making them feel understood and seen as confidants. When speaking with someone who has made a mistake, you should encourage them, boosting their confidence and inspiring them. As Kwai Kok Tu once said, no one does not wish to be stronger than others. Mastering conversation is not about mirroring others blindly, but about genuinely understanding and considering the position of others. Knowing the real thoughts and desires of others and speaking words of benefit to them is key. Kwai Kok Tu, celebrated for elevating the art of conversation to its pinnacle, pioneered the practice of strategic discourse, empowering his disciples such as Zhang Yi, Su Qin, Pang Huan, and Sun Bin to influence and control the geopolitical landscape. Beyond eloquence, what matters more is the ability to empathetically switch perspectives, considering the interests of monarchs and states. In communication, value sincerity above all. Even the most brilliant eloquence cannot touch hearts as deeply as genuine emotion. Speaking with sincerity not only broadens one's path in life, but also makes the journey smoother and more favorable. 44. The people we surround ourselves with will inevitably shape the course of our lives. The company you keep can profoundly shape your life's journey. Surrounding yourself with diligent individuals wards off laziness. The presence of optimistic people can buoy your spirits during down times. Walking alongside the wise prevents mediocrity, and befriending the exemplary can propel you to peaks of glory. Scientists assert that humans are unique in their ability to absorb suggestions. Positive suggestions can significantly influence one's emotional and physiological state, igniting latent potential and enhancing capabilities beyond the ordinary. This encourages a drive for progress and a zeal to advance. Conversely, it's wise to distance yourself from those with a negative impact. Unwittingly, they may steal your dreams, leading to a gradual descent into disillusionment and mediocrity. Those who radiate positivity are like the sun, casting light wherever they go, whereas negative influences are akin to the moon, inconsistent whether you meet them for the first time or after ten years. 45. Attitude is everything. Your outlook will shape your future. Attitude determines everything. Your future is shaped by your mindset. It's often said that in life, three great fortunes exist. Finding a good teacher when you go to school, working alongside talented colleagues and a good boss, and marrying a soulmate who truly understands and connects with you. Sometimes, just a warm smile or a thoughtful inquiry from them can brighten your existence. The greatest misfortune in life is to lack the presence of positive, visionary individuals by your side, making your life mediocre and dull. There's a powerful saying, it's not who you are that matters, but who you're with. The story of Mencius's mother moving three times illustrates the importance of the environment in shaping one's future, highlighting how crucial it is to be in the right company. An eagle raised in a hen house loses its natural ability to soar. It cannot ascend to great heights. Similarly, a wild wolf growing up among goats loses its inherent nature. It cannot roam the mountains and rivers freely. No matter how exceptional you are, being surrounded by those with a negative influence can sap your drive to excel, causing you to lose motivation and settle for mediocrity. If you aspire to soar like an eagle, fly with the eagles, not settle amongst lesser birds. If you wish to roam like a wolf, advance with the pack and not with the herd. Surround yourself with those who inspire you to reach great heights and explore vast landscapes. 46. The Donkey Carrying Sacred Relics 
This is a fable by the French author La Fontaine, marking one of his emblematic works. The story revolves around a donkey that, on its first day of carrying sacred relics, witnessed devotees worshipping, crawling on the ground before it, leading the donkey to feel a sense of pride. The next day, tasked again by the priest, but this time to pull a millstone, the donkey, still basking in the previous day's glory, refused to obey, which resulted in a beating from its owner, causing it to wail loudly. A ten-year-old child, after hearing this tale, remarked on the donkey's folly by saying, Don't forget you are but a donkey. Indeed, the world is full of donkeys who confuse their worth with that of sacred relics. They exhibit arrogance and despondency with the rise and fall of power, swaggering when in position and despairing when ousted. The donkey remains a donkey while sacred relics are sacred. Even a child can grasp this simple truth, yet adults often remain deluded. Carrying sacred relics can be addictive, like opium, leading to inevitable detachment. Similarly, people seek glory, supported by admirers from all directions, provided with essentials and luxuries, including a wealth of money. However, this is no different from a donkey carrying sacred relics, mistaking opulence for self-worth, eventually leading to a fear of loss and living in misery. In reality, one's physical appearance, preferences, skills, personality, and thoughts are what truly coexist with one's life. The days spent carrying sacred relics are but fleeting moments in the tumultuous stream of memory.